Hi, it's Terry here from Full of Love and Fitness. Now, do you kick the pads or bag and think? Do you throw a few kicks and are knackered like you just done a 100 meter sprint? partners holding pads and you kick them, do you want them to say <laughs> Well I'm going to show you 10 steps to kick harder with less effort. Alright, so I'm going to show you on the bag the steps that help me improve my kicking game. Now, it's all good kicking hard but you don't want to be gassing out by kicking a few kicks. You want to be able to kick hard and for the whole round, okay? And round after round. And that's only going to come with good technique and that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so step one. We need to make sure we are in the correct distance, whether it be bag, this is a really small bag, but it doesn't matter. Whether it be bag, or it be your opponent, or it be your pad holder, you've got to be in the correct distance. If I'm too close, and I go to kick, then my knee may hit the, the, the pads or bag first, and then that's not gonna be very good. Or if I'm too far, then my ankle, top of my ankle, my foot's gonna hit. That's not gonna be very good either. Unless you're going for the head, of course, then it's okay, but imagine we're going for a mid kick. We don't wanna hit that hit the midsection with your foot. You wanna be hitting with the shin, and that's it, okay? So how we get the correct distance is, so I'm in my guard, whatever foot I've got forward, I'm going to extend my jab, okay? So now I've extended my jab, I don't need to turn my foot, but I've just extended my jab out and it's full length, it's touching. So you might see boxers or people throwing a jab out, it's because they're getting their distance. So now I've got my hand out, my distance, I know that this is the correct, the correct distance. So when I kick, I know it's gonna hit the target with my shin. So next time you're doing anything, you can start popping your jab out with your pad holder or a bag or whatever, and you'll be at the correct distance. Okay, step two, so you've got the correct distance. Now what we need to do is we need to step out at 45 degree angles. Now, if you don't know what 45 degree angles, don't worry. the side it's in between that okay we're gonna step out to that diagonal angle the reason why we step out from the target is because we need to create momentum okay so we step and we create momentum for the kick to go through the target okay so when we step it's like we create this stretch elastic so if I step in it stretches that leg elastic and it's ready to fire now if we don't step we're just gonna kick the target, we're just going to hit the target, but when you want power, you want to kick through the target, whether it's your pad holder, whether it's the bag, or an opponent, we're talking about in the ring, right, we're not talking about the street, okay, so, we're going to step, okay, which helps drive that, that kick through the bag, if I don't step, that's without it, with a step, it goes through. So make sure you step out, which is going to create elastic, step out and kick. But if you step out and then you wait for a minute, you're going to lose that, uh, that fire in elastic. So you step, if you wait a bit, that's going to be really difficult. So step and release the kick. Okay, step three. When we're stepping out, we can't be flat footed. We need to come up on the toes, which is going to help the hip drive the kick. Now our kicks are all coming from the hips, so when you kick, I want you to imagine turning your hip, don't even think about the kick, think about turning the hip. And how you're going to help that is when you step out, okay, you step out, you come up on your toes as you fire the kick, boom, so that's going to help drive the hips to throw the kick through. But when we step on our toes, 
we can't just keep our feet like this. Because that kick's just going to go up. We need to turn our feet. Try and get it 180 degrees. Try and get it turned around. So if you're flat footed, it's going to be very difficult for that foot to turn around. So coming up on that toes is going to help the turn as well as the hips. And also if you're flat footed, imagine turning your flat foot on the ground. You could fuck your knee up. Excuse my swearing. So we're going to step up on our toes and we're going to turn in, into the kick. We're not going to step and turn our feet first. We're going to step and our feet are going to be straight up on toes and it's going to turn into the kick. Boom! Like that, okay? So see my foot? It's gone 180 degrees, okay? If I do it properly, okay? Now I exaggerate it, then that's why I went all crazy. But if I don't exaggerate it, boom! Yeah? So that's what you want. Up on your toes, as your foot's going to leave the ground, up, and boom, turn. And as you're thinking about the hip as well, it's going to really help. So remember, just the heels come in the same direction as the kick, and you're doing like a 180, okay? That's going to really help the kick, going to help the kick rip into the bag. Okay, so step number four, you want your kicking leg to be as straight as possible. We don't want a taekwondo snap kick. I'm not saying Taekwondo like snap kicks are shit, I'm just saying that's not what we're going for, okay? We're gonna go for a straight leg, like a bone bat, okay? We wanna use the whole leg. So we want it to be as straight as possible, okay? Boom! You might have a little bend, but you just want it to be loose and you want it to hit. You don't want it to be come up and then snap it. If I show you this way, you don't want it to be thing. You want it to be released just straight as possible, so the whole leg just drives in, okay? Um, that's it, that's the other step. So just try and have your leg as straight as possible. Try and be loose and just let it, imagine it just releasing from its socket. Boom! Okay, step five. Now the arms play a massively important role in kicking. So the side that we're kicking, that arm, we need it to drive across our body. It's quite a violent, you can't just throw it like this. The, the more violent you throw it, it helps your shoulder come back and your chest come out and that helps your hips go with some force. So we've got a correct distance. We're gonna step out and we're gonna make sure we turn all the way, okay? So those are the steps and with the hip, okay? So with the side that we're kicking, we're gonna make sure boom, it drives across, okay? If I show you this way, if I step out, you drive it across, okay? Yeah, you see that motion, boom, or this way, boom, okay? That's really gonna help generate power. Now the other side, let's say for example, you're kicking with the right side, the right arm goes across, the left side, this is gonna stay up. This is, should be here anyway in your guard. The hands are gonna stay up, the elbows are gonna stay tucked in. This is gonna help your balance, okay? Now, if we're off balance, it's really gonna affect our power. We want to be balanced, and with this arm here, this keeps me straight. So you don't even want to move this, okay? So if I'm here, boom, I don't even want to move this. Now what you'll find with this one is sometimes your hand will be up and the elbow will come out. So if my elbow comes out and I'm kicking, my body's going to fall kind of that way towards the elbow. So you keep the elbow tucked in, hand there. So the side that we're not kicking, we're going to keep it up, and the side where we're kicking, that arm is going to go across the body, okay? So balance, power. Okay, step number six. So we've got all the balance we're talking about. So balance is massively important to generate power as well. If you're off balance, your kick's not going to be good, okay? So another thing is we want to keep our chin down. Now, just like we're doing anything, you should always be keeping your chin down every you do punches, kicks. So for example, with this, with this uh, kick, if my chin is up in the air, when I go to kick, my body is gonna start leaning back, which means the kick's just, it's, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be very good, okay? We need to be upright when we kick. And the only way we can do it is keeping our chin up. So we've got this hand to keep us balanced. We're gonna keep our chin down, so we now we're keeping a nice upright stance. So when we go to kick, a nice upright, okay? It's same if you're gonna throw a knee. If you throw a knee and your chin's up, your body's going to go back, you're going to lean back, but if you keep it in, you can drive that knee through. 
So everything you're doing, even with punches, you keep your chin down and everything, okay? So that's really important as well. Okay, step number seven. When we wanna kick, punch, knee, anything, we wanna make sure we breathe out. That's gonna help contract your abs, your core, which is gonna tighten everything up, but also it's gonna help you relax. Now, if for example, you're holding your breath and you do anything, you're gonna be tense. Your muscles are gonna be tense and everything's gonna be really slow and not, it's not gonna be as powerful, it's not gonna be as fast, but you're also gonna tie yourself up. You're not gonna get the oxygen and the more tense you are, the more knackered you are. So you see people kicking hard, they might be so tense they start getting knackered. Now, by breathing out, helps you just relax. But like I said, times everything up, so that's how you get the power as well. But things become faster and quicker. Speed equals power as well, so that's how you're gonna be able to uh, do it for ages and harder. Step number eight. Now, I don't have it here. This bag is not very heavy. But if you can find a gym with a real heavy bag, one that's not really gonna move, you could have those long ass banana bags or you can have those really massive, massive bags or the ones with the steel pole down the middle that don't move. That is another way that you're gonna be able to get more power is by kicking something really hard, non-stop, non-stop. That's how you're gonna generate power. I can't show you it now, but that is one of the ways you're gonna get more power. Okay, so two steps to go. So ninth step that I would say is really important is practice, practice, practice. I've given you all the steps apart from one that I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna tell you in a minute. But practice, go these, do these kicks over and over and over and over again. Practice, 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 practice makes perfect. You wanna be doing this hundreds of times, just non-stop until it becomes near perfect. But you can always learn, you can always keep getting better, but just keep practicing. Okay, so step number 10, finally the last step. This one for me is really important. So we were talking about tension earlier. Now, you may think this is weird when I say it to you, but don't try and kick hard. send your partner or you send your bag into another dimension then it's not going to happen because like I said before you're going to tense up your muscles are going to be crazy tight and it's going to be a lot weaker and a lot slower you need to be loose as fuck now I use that word because that just means the loosest you're ever going to be okay so if I'm crazy tense then the kick's only going to do so much it might be hard but guaranteed, I'm only going to have to do a few of those before I knack myself out. But it's not going to be as hard and as fast if I stay loose. And I could do the loose kick all day long. Like I said, the reason for it is because everything is nice and relaxed. Yeah? And we're trying to kick hard with less effort. So if you do everything I've told you, your distance, your stepping out, your turning your foot, your kicking your leg as straight as possible, you're keeping your hand and elbow up, you're throwing your arm across your body, you're keeping your chin down and you are breathing. I mean, I remembered all that, yeah? You throw this loose, you think about the hips, you should be able to generate some good power. You should be able to go again all day long. You shouldn't be getting tired. You know, you know what I mean? Even in the switch kick, you should be able to do these all day. See, I'm not heavy breathing, but if I was Hitting it hard, I can already feel that I'm out of breath by just two. And I was doing five or six of those talking, no problem. So remember, stay loose is the one of the main, main keys, okay? Okay, thanks guys for watching. Now I really hope that improves your kicking game. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. And please write in the comments if it has helped you. 
And if you don't understand anything, just write to me and let me know. And uh, also, please subscribe so I can carry on doing these fitness videos because I just want to help everyone out and do loads of shit about fitness. So, take care.